ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm hand for the Sacred Hearts Band! Hollywood actor Jim Belushi likes to unwind by singing the blues. I have a band at the House of Blues here in Los Angeles. I play about once a month. And we just released their first CD called 362236 with some great rhythm and blues. Some, uh, a very, it, it has a Blues Brothers feel to it because it has that great horn sound and uh, good energy and very uh, unusual selections. Featuring Joe Sky Sublet. <laughs> Boy, it just woke up my spirit, my passion, being in this band. And uh, we're looking to do a European tour. My baby, she looks so fine. 36, 22, 36. Cause on, hands on, cause she's mine, oh my. We have a big sound, and it's really a party. You know, the people really dance when we play. Uh, we inspire them. 36, 22, 36. My girl can be tired, but she can be beat. Jim, the son of an Albanian steakhouse owner, was born in Wheaton, Illinois. Swing it, Joe! his fame and fortune with a succession of hit movies in the mid-80s, such as Red Heat and K-9. Today, Jim lives in Brentwood, California. It's a smoker's home. You can smoke cigars in this house. Unlike a lot of houses in Los Angeles. Or around the world, I imagine. Uh, this house was uh, built in 1929 and uh, had two owners. Both of them lived here for a long time and uh, I've been living here for a long time, about 11 years. It's kind of a, you know, Spanish, Mediterranean, Italian kind of house. The guy that lived here before really was kind of, uh, was that agoraphobic? They don't like to leave the house. The house was very dark when I came in. <laughs> and there was a lot of trees and shrubbery and, and, uh, he didn't really come outside to greet us. We kind of came inside. And he liked my wife at the time, and that's the reason we got the house. She was very nice to him. So the design was just really always here. It just kind of overgrew, and we just kind of took everything out and so you could see the pool. I kind of like the pool. It's like, it's like a little pond. We plugged up these windows, knocked all this down. This little room here was a laundry room. This is the way we found the house with a lot of growth. And then we just pulled all this down, knocked this wall down, built out here, and rebuilt everything inside, including this terrace here, and split open these doors here. This door, the front door is actually you know, an 18th century uh, door from Provence, which is really a beautiful door, and kind of left it the way it was. Didn't repaint it, just kind of sealed it. When I come into this house, I'm gone. I'm not in L.A. anymore. Uh, it's just very comfortable for me. I could sit here and smoke cigars all day. I can't wait to get home. He's eight. Eight and a half. What's four plus four? Eight. Good, okay. Jim has a devoted friend in his dog, Mimo. Here, give me the ball. Here. 
Give me the ball. <laughs> Give me the ball. There you go. He'll do this all day long. I, I jog with him. Uh, he likes to run. He gets very excited about running. I'm your friend. I like you. You like me. <laughs> See, if I get him to sit, I can get it. It's really hopeless. Stay! Oh, he's so nice! <laughs> you win. Jim also shares his luxurious home with his fiance, Jenny. Well, I met her. I met her at. Uh, well, I was I was divorced, you know, and I was on the kind of single scene, and I was dating about five or six different girls, and it was Christmas time, and I had to buy some presents for these girls, and so I went to this little jewelry shop and bought all these rings and earrings for these girls, and Jenny happened to be the girl selling me the jewelry. And I thought, you know, this is the girl I always wanted to be with. So I asked her out. And then slowly, all the other girls just kind of fell to the side. And there was Jenny. We're getting married May 2nd. We're gonna get married in the backyard. I'm gonna move this and put some flowers. Flowers here and get married here. I wanted to get married up there, but... It's really pretty up there, you know, the flowers and the pepper tree. And, and uh, Jenny said, you mean where Mimo poops? So we're not going to get married up there. <laughs> Mimo poops up there. Why, wow, you dropped the ball? What? No. I did, I skydived once. I jumped out of a plane. Uh, I was terrified. We got married twice. I was terrified. You know, I put them all in the same, but the jet, no. Blue Angels are uh, part of the uh, United States Air Force. It's actually used as a recruitment uh, tool. Six jets, and they do about 50 shows a year. Uh, they're air shows, and they're the best of the best, the pilots. And while they're practicing for their new show, they invite VIPs, you know, just for fun. They're fast. They invited me. I went for a jet ride over the desert. Uh, broke 6.7 Gs. It was a trip, though. Pass out was a trip, man. I went back to my childhood, honest to God. What's going on, Jim? I'm tripping. <laughs> and then, uh, then he said, what do you want to do now? And I said, go fast. <laughs> I love it. So we went really fast, but 200 feet off the ground. They let me steer. The best one was, I did this one. The best one was this one. Pull back like this. My jet just goes. Oh, it's a big loop. Like this, you can look at the ground. It's... Then I threw up. That was a little humiliating. But I had fun. <laughs> Speed freak Jim has also tried his hand at motor racing. A long 
Long Beach Grand Prix, they have a celebrity race um, where there's about 15, 16 of us that will race. We do 10, 10 laps in these Toyota Celicos. Late apex, late apex, third, third, third. Keep it fairly tight. Tight along here. And then let it run let out. It run out here, third. So we do four days of training out in the desert. It's quite fun, uh, but it was four days of intense training, and then we got one more practice on the real track, and then on Saturday, the April 4th, we're going to be in the race. I started driving when I was uh, 13, illegally. So. I learned to drive very carefully so the police wouldn't stop me. So I actually turned out to be a pretty good driver. And I'm just hoping to stay in the race because this race, in a desert, you didn't have any walls. In the Grand Prix, it's all walls. And here's my big oversized helmet. If you hit that, you get a big headache. <laughs> Los Angeles is a dozen rain. I'm so I'm nervous about this race because all I want to do is complete it. Because all you need is one little hit on a bumper and you can spin out, hit the wall, and you're done. It's only 10 laps. And then it's between me and Greg Lamond. Greg Lamond, the uh, you know, world champion uh, Tour, de, uh, Tour de France bicyclist. He's a racer in this race, and he's very good. And he was coming up behind me trying to pass me one time. I mean, I didn't like that, you know? And then, so, son of a clipped my, clipped my bumper, and I went Whoo! It's fun, it's exciting, you know? <laughs> it's, you can go really fast in cars. You can crack them up and someone else pays for them. I like that. How was it? Wet. But Jim's main love in life is acting. And he's particularly proud of a recent cop movie he made with the late Tupac Shakur, shortly before he was murdered. I did a movie called Gang Related, which I really loved, it was with Tupac Shakur, or it should come out in September or so in London which was uh, a black comedy about uh, these two crooked cops. The most important thing is we can't lose control of this case. We can never lose control of this case. Yeah. Whatever evidence there is, it's got to go through us. We lay down a trail. We make it nice and logical. We're the teachers, and two and two can add up to five if it's our classroom. I fell in love with Tupac Shakur. This is who you picked. You picked a surgeon who performs transplants on the poor in Africa. He was living on the streets. How the hell I was supposed to know he was a damn doctor? Oh, he's not a doctor. You picked a saint to pin a murder on. If you see the movie, you'll see the joy in my eyes. I just love this guy. Jim also has fond memories of his brother, John, the star of the Blues Brothers and Animal House, who died in 1982 after a drug overdose. Now, this is one piece I had built. It's got kind of... Uh, some of my brother's stuff. You know, he gave me this can, and these are some of his awards all the way back in eighth grade. Here's a grade school ribbons of John's. This was a Havana ashtray with all the different labels. It was his. Here's some more athletic awards. Here, look at this, 1962. 62 to 63. Athlete of 1962. John Belushi. Here's a Cubs signed ball that I got. Here's a check that John sent me when I was in college for $10. There's a Super Bowl ring for the Chicago Bears. That's mine. I just put that in there. My son is 17. He lives with me. Yeah. Beautiful boy. His mother was a very beautiful woman, and he is a, he's just a, such a good-looking boy. I really don't push for anything except for him to... Uh, Learn the discipline of learning, you know. Uh, but whatever he wants to do is fine with me. Yeah. In a state where smoking is virtually banned, Jim has opened a refuge for diehards. Hey guys, 
Hello, don't move that one, don't move that one. A cigar bar. This is the uh, Lone Wolf uh, store here in Santa Monica, California. This is the humidor. What happens here is a lot of cigar smoking and uh, cigar selections and uh, I don't know, people kind of hang out here. Actually, this place is open till one in the morning. This room is kept at, uh, at a certain humidity and temperature, which is great for cigars. And uh, so everybody has their own humidor within this humidor. And these are members. I want to show you a little something about cigars. This is a Dominican Republic cigar. It's got five different tobaccos. And this particular cigar that's rated a 90 has a selection of dark Lajada tobacco one and there's a little lighter one that's two and there's an in between one that's three and then there's a what they call a binder which is a leaf that holds the three fillers together and then there's the wrapper and this is a Sumatra wrapper from Indonesia it's like wine or food you know you, you can spice it with different amounts of each Chuck Norris and I our partners in this Lone Wolf. Uh, we have a place here in Santa Monica and a lounge and a um, restaurant in Dallas, Texas, where Chuck hangs out with his TV show. And uh, there's a picture over there of me and Chuck down in the Dominican Republic uh, rolling our first cigar. It was not a very good cigar, but it was our first cigar. <laughs> uh, I've been smoking for about 10 years. I actually started with Arnold. I did a movie called Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And we were shooting in the police car and the windows had to be closed, you know, for sound. And Arnold would smoke cigars between takes and the car would fill with smoke and I started turning green. I started getting a little sick. So Arnold gave me a cigar. So if you're smoking the cigar, you don't get sick. And I started smoking cigars with Arnold. He actually started to teach me. The House of Blues on Sunset Strip is one of LA's hottest music joints. The House of Blues was started by Isaac Tigret, who, who actually started the Hard Rock Cafe in London. <clears throat> in the House of Blues, we have six of them here in the United States. It's a uh, concert hall, restaurant, museum of folk art. And uh, Danny Aykroyd and myself are, are partners in it. This is the, the Wall of Fame here, all the blue, great blues artists that's uh, sung here at the uh, <coughs> House of Blues. Here's uh, Junior Wells. This material is actually a wedding tent, an Indian wedding tent. Everything in the House of Blues has kind of a spiritual context, whether it's from India or from the South. Here's John Mayo, great blues bringer, Englishman. That's my mother. <laughs> Walls are also adorned with important examples of American folk art. Now, this is my favorite artist. You're going to get a lot of reflection, I'm sorry, but this is uh, Sybil Gibson. She started painting when she was 58 years old. She's from, uh, from Georgia and Alabama area, I'm sorry. Well, what's interesting about her is that she would take, like, this is a newspaper here and she would just color it with the type of coloring and dyes that she could uh, find in her house. And they're very ghostly and, and, and they're very impressionistic. I, I like them. I, I don't know why I like them. This is Jimmy Lee Suddeth. He uses only house paint. Uh, yeah, this is actually a, a, a self-portrait, believe it or not. picture of my son when he was two. <laughs> so he's always here, you know, flying around. Isn't that great, man? I caught the artist.
said, Dave? Being one of the owners, she said, okay, I got it. And up here. You get that one? Yeah. That's John. He's always on the stage. Little angel just kind of watching over everything. Now that you know just where I stand, I'd like to know what you got planned. The band guys actually said something the other day that was interesting. They said, you know, we're a bunch of old farts. We've been on the road a long time, you know. And a gig is a gig is a gig. But you're such fresh meat. You still have so much fun that you re-inspired us to why we started doing this in the first place. Sven, head masseuse at Spa Nordique. Ooh, and Paolo, Mr. Italy, tennis pro at Spa Roma. Mm, Don Juan, ex-matador, now my personal towel boy. Every day, the Travel Channel uncovers the world's greatest spas. So relax and enjoy the scenery. Ooh, Gaston from Spa Paris. And my boyfriend after I dumped him for Gaston. World's Greatest Spas, weekdays at 10 and noon on the Travel Channel.